Kalimera, it's Michael O'Grady here from Salesforce. I'm delighted to join you today in presenting a virtual fireside chat between Salesforce and NetU in Ultimate FinTech Conference. Um, before we start, I would like to thank you for your time today. It's very much appreciated and we hope you get some value from today's session. Um, as I mentioned, I'll be hosting the, the um, session today, but I will be joined by three of my Salesforce colleagues, Alan Yeverbaum, who's our platform specialist, Alexandru Urstu, who is our marketing cloud specialist, and Pierre Yves, who is our service cloud and customer experience specialist. I'm delighted to also uh, introduce uh, Christoph Ta Christos Takis, who will be joining us from NetU. Christos, can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, I'm, I'm also glad to be joining this um, uh, chat and um, uh, really pleased to contribute in this. Uh, my name is Christos Tatis. I'm a senior commercial manager at NetU Group. Uh, NetU Group has been uh, you know, a Salesforce uh, partner since uh, 2014, and we are cooperating uh, with our friends in, in Salesforce for a long time now. Absolutely. So it, NetU would be one of our longest standing partners in a strategic region that is the Mediterranean and doing many implementations of Salesforce, successful implementations across our customer base. So thank you for joining us today, Christos. Before we jump into the fireside chat, I'm just going to uh, flip over to Alan Yeverbaum, who's going to quickly talk us through how businesses uh, go digital fast. And he's going to explain that term to us as well. So Alan, passing over to you quickly, my friend. Thanks many, Michael. Um, so yeah, I mean, going digital fast really um, speaks to the digital imperative that we're seeing within businesses. And, you know, everybody in the Forex and FinTech industry at large has been undergoing some type of digital transformation um, over the last few years. But we're using the word imperative now because the speed of change and the uh, critical nature of that change has has been increasing and we can see that across all industries um, you know we've seen companies like adidas move to completely online or starbucks finding ways to deliver coffee without human contact and across all facets of a company as well we're seeing you know businesses having to communicate through new digital channels like slack and zoom um, we've had to decentralize decision making and empower people working from home and different locations with the information and the processes they need to, to continue to execute on business. And, and this has you know, never been more true for uh, the FinTech industry. One of the things that, you know, we did a recent survey with a lot of our um, Forex and, and, and FinTech and banking customers. And, and what we're seeing is, is that um, there's been a 28% um, percent improvement in the ability to build and integrate apps um, on Salesforce. So companies choosing to go to Salesforce have been able to increase how quickly they can, they can integrate and build. Um, there has been a, 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 a great success in the world of uh, customer service and customer experience with 28% faster case resolution. This is critical. Um, and and that, that faster case resolution um, doesn't even take into account um, how Salesforce helps deflect cases or empower a customer to solve their own problems with whether it's chatbots or knowledge articles and things like that. And then, of course, the whole notion of digitizing um, our relationships and whether that's delivering an app to a customer or creating a partner portal or um, some kind of strategic interface with one of your partners. Um, Salesforce has shown massive improvements in that. Um, all in all, companies who have gone with Salesforce for that digital imperative, um, over 91% of them are, are seeing um, large return on investments. So when we break that down and to give you an insight, if you like, into um, what the strategic objectives that, um, you know, Forex and FinTech and, 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 and financial services companies are trying to do, of course, we're all trying to increase revenue and improve operational efficiency. But where we're really seeing the, the gains and the, the focus of these projects, if you like, is um, optimizing service processes. So how we engage our customer, how we communicate with our customer, enhancing 
uh, employee productivity solutions. And, you know, we talk about um, creating customer centric work processes and capabilities so that employees can focus on delivering amazing experiences. And that's what really drives a, a, a fourth industrial revolution style company. Um, improving channel distribution, um, obviously critical. And then finally, um, streamlining the uh, customer acquisition, onboarding, uh, initial transaction process, really hyper-focusing um, on getting our customers moving on our platform. So that's where we see the, the strategic investments coming. And so that's, I, that's very relevant, Alan, to the, the traders, the Forex space, trying to onboard uh, somebody quite quickly whilst doing it com with compliance. And we're going to talk about compliance later on in the fireside chat. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So look, let's, let's stop and think for a second about how the Salesforce platform and the Salesforce ecosystem empowers that. Well, first of all, we're the world's number one customer engagement platform by a million miles. Um, the number one in sales, service, marketing, application development, commerce, an amazing platform. And why we've built out this platform of capabilities, um, we have four kind of guiding principles. Number one, single source of truth. So single source of truth for our customer, for our products, and for our performance as a business fast time to value. So the very nature of how Salesforce delivers its technology means that we can build apps, processes, channels, products very, very quickly and start realizing value very quickly. And in COVID, that's immensely important. And building all of that on a flexible and scalable platform. So, you know, we've all seen businesses having to pivot very quickly and being able to take advantage of new products, new markets, um, having to deliver a channel quickly, scale from 10 customers to 10,000. You know, whatever you need to do, you need a platform that's going to keep pace of change with you. And, and finally, I think for Salesforce, proven customer success has been our absolute obsession and passion as a business. Um, and look, we're a subscription business. So if you're not successful as a business, Salesforce is not successful as a business. So, so that's our key focus, if you like. Fantastic. Now, yeah. I mean, I mentioned the Salesforce platform. I just want to zoom out to like a 50,000 foot view for a second and show you that customer 360. So a lot of people think of Salesforce as a Salesforce automation or a customer service application, and it's really not anymore. It's an entire suite of capabilities designed to deliver customer 360 truth. Um, we also deliver employee truth and product truth, but the focus is always on driving that customer experience. And so we see things like marketing and commerce and analytics and integration, industry specific solutions, including the financial services industry, employee capabilities, learning capabilities. So a real, real platform for, for change here. And it's all underpinned by a range of enterprise services that includes security and mobile and AI and low code, no code builder. So, uh, you know, an immensely impressive um, platform that's been assembled by Salesforce. So. As I said, and you know, taking a step back, a lot of people use Salesforce traditionally to manage lead and prospect in the value chain, shall we say. So when we look at these chevrons here in the value chain, yes, we're the leaders in lead and prospect and, and even customer acquisition. However, we'd like you to look at Salesforce from a new lens and understand that we can help with the entire customer journey. We can help you reinvent how you engage with your customers, um, reinvent how your customers engage with you and create an agility layer for you as a business to really take on the whole notion of um, uh, fast time to value and the whole notion of the digital imperative and that speed of business we were talking about, Michael. So hopefully that sets us up for a good conversation around this. And uh, I'm back to you, my friend. It absolutely does, and thank you. It's it's a good um, it's a good uh, foundation for this chat that we're going to have. And I'm going to kick it off very quickly. And Christos, I'm going to direct the first question to you because, in, in essence, um, you are the person. Uh, I net you being one of the leading uh, partners, as Salesforce partners in the Mediterranean region you guys are the first people to interact with customers, you know, and prospects. And can you please articulate how, when you engage a business, how do you really identify that there's a requirement or a need 
for for a solution like Salesforce or a platform like Salesforce, and not just Salesforce, but how do you identify that? Please? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, of course. Um, but when the customer, you know, uh, calls out for us uh, and uh, we engage in a discussion, or they understanding their needs, and uh, uh, it is really, really very important to realize the root the root of, an, of any problems, the, the real pain points they have. So usually in this process, we find you know, some legacy systems with limited capabilities, you know, information regarding customers scattered uh, in different sources, uh, causing these what we call operational silos and, 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 and inefficiencies in an organization. Um, they, usually this kind of problems have a serious impact in, in, in internally, but the most importantly on the customer experience. Um, some other times we, we know, you know, you, we face issues uh, of overloading of information, sales information that really the organization no longer, you know, can handle. Um, we often see multiple systems operating uh, uh, together in a way integrated, but uh, you know, not in real time. Uh, and that's a critical point when it causes, it causes frustration to the employees and again to a customer because in essence, the information provided is not real time, is wrong or outdated. So at points like this, we really get to understand that a platform like Salesforce is, is an excellent fit. Um, uh, Salesforce, you know, you could transform uh, these organizations uh, uh, to a single platform um, um, uh, organizations offering, you know, uh, unified customer 360, reliable views in, in so many angles. Um, we do explain at that point the customer, the benefits of such a platform like, like Salesforce. And of course, we demonstrate the system uh, to, to, to the customer. We make uh, explicit demos uh, in order for them to understand that what we have all understood so far, that Salesforce is not just a CRM. It provides you know, excellent integration capabilities, removing the silos that I have talked about uh, and providing you know, all these real time, transparent view to the whole organization. Now, it's, um, it is very important for the, for the customer to, to realize that having a platform like Salesforce really makes their digital transformation you know, a, a journey rather than, than a target. Because at, at the point we have Salesforce in, in, in the organization, they can plan um, rollouts, continuous features easily. They can react to competition, very, very flexible in a yep. very fast, and they can eventually they can meet their expectations, their customer expectations in a very, very natural way. Um, well, some, somewhere at this point, we also engage our partners in Salesforce U uh, for further discussions with the customer, and we can all together find solutions to their legacy issues, and of course, discuss you know commercial issues and, and stuff like that. So basically, this is uh, the main way Net is contributing in, in this identification of organizations that are really the best fit uh, for for systems like Salesforce. And, and I must say, you're doing an amazing job. I work very closely, and, and so do Frankie Maria down in Cyprus and across the Greek, your Greek team as well, George, over in Greece. So um, I actually know how you, how you find um, the, the challenges businesses face. I just wanted our audience to, to understand it as well. Thank you. Thank you. It, 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 it's a great segue then. I'm going to pass over to Pierre Eves because Pierre Eves sits in, in, in um, what Salesforce is, probably most known for, which is more of the, the CRM element of Salesforce or the customer experience uh, piece. So Pierre, um, Christos talked about kind of legacy systems, siloed data. Can you please describe how Salesforce from, let's use customer service, for example, how Salesforce takes away the, the, the standalone email, the Excel being used, the, the standalone live chat, the, your CTI or telephony tool sitting uh, completely separated to your CRM. Can you talk to the Salesforce benefits 
within financial services and insurance and Forex specifically today. Can you talk to that value that Salesforce brings, please? If I explain your, your question, I would say, what are the goals in terms of customer experience when you're when your financial service organization. I guess um, there's three things you need to master in order to make sure you, you get a loyal customer, basically. Uh, these three things are control, customization, convenience, okay? What do I mean by control? Uh, basically, your customer expectation is please know me, okay? They have interaction with you. They use your core products, of course, but uh, they don't want you to guess where you are at, at in, the, in the customer lifetime cycle. So basically you should uh, develop an understanding on your customer segmentation, for example, of your customer. And the way we do it, the, the technology we bring is this uh, customer 360 platform that we mentioned, okay? So you heard about integration, that's where it comes into play because your core system and the CRM system will come into uh, combination so that you can build this 360 view of the customer. In, a, in the customer care, we call it the console. In, in one interaction, you see who is that person, what was the last message, what do they buy, and, and what could be the next step, okay? Uh, the net, net benefit for control is our loyalty, okay? You know me, I, I understand you care for me, and I, I will want more business. Second thing, customization. Basically, uh, the expectation is offer me what's, what's good for me, okay? You may have a catalog of offers. You want to manage it consistently at each interaction, okay? So there's many technology which could help you doing this uh, correctly. Um, things like guided process, again, back to, the, to what you can expect from a base platform is it, when you onboard somebody, uh, on a new offer, it should be guided in such a way it's easy for the customer to engage, it's easy for the agent to serve, and you should it, it should flow from wherever you start to down to uh, underwriting or whatever closing statement is your is your last step, okay? Or credit in in term of uh, of FX, for example. Uh, another thing would could be next best action, okay? If you have a complex catalog, if you have compliance situation, if you have policies to obey by, uh, it's, it's complex for a customer agent entering into a conversation to know which one is the right one, okay? So we developed this technology called Next Best Action so that it surfaces the right thing at the right time of interaction so that it, it has an impact. I mean, the net benefit you can expect is basically, you know, uh, grow your revenue, okay? If I if I understand what you're offering at the right moment of my time, I will want to to, to buy more, okay? The last thing, and, and you mentioned it in your in your introduction, uh, also is is convenience. Um, you you serve people that are spending their focus on uh, things that are for, important to them, and they and they want to spend time on this, not. Not, not in trouble. So you, you should ease the time of your customer. And the best way to do it is pro probably to, to provide options, okay? Um, not everybody likes to wait uh, for a phone call, uh, but they may want to send an email. Not everybody uh, likes email, but they may want to chat now or to use a messaging platform like, uh, like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. So. And, and most of the people I know, they actually want to serve themselves. They don't want to, uh, to, to wait for anyone to re-engage. And they, if they can find uh, what they're looking for uh, from a self-service perspective, they will be happy. So portals, mobile application with, with knowledge content, with, with inter, you know, history of interactions, with offer, all of this without in, interacting with, uh, with someone is very, very well perceived. And of course, as, as a brand, you need to architect the omnicanality of it, okay? Uh, and that's, that's, that's what the platform does for you. At the end of the thing, and that last, last point, uh, at the end of the thing, uh, there is an agent. So there's a discussion between an agent and a customer. So the one important thing also is skill set. okay? People are engaging in more and more complex things to do and they have less and less time spent to do it. 
So um, investing into the skill of your, uh, of your agents and make sure they can progress is something that is very important for your success. And so we invested recently into what we call workforce engagement for all kinds of reasons, like the COVID situation increased the way we work remotely, for example. And we were very focused not only on the customer now, but on the employee. And, and basically what you can expect is, is, is cost reduction. Okay, spend less to, to get this um, uh, really good customer experience altogether. I love that. And I love the getting them down to uh, the lower left hand side of the quadrant of customer effort and employee effort and, and keeping it low on both sides. There's no point in reducing the customer effort if the employee effort is exponentially increased as well. So I really I like that. And I love the next best offer. That's it. That, uh, uh, these fourth, as Alan mentioned, fourth industrial revolution businesses now are in artificial intelligence and predictive analysis is doing managing a query in front of you, but by pushing up uh, uh, information or data that will arm you to manage stuff that might happen in the future. I love it. Um, I, I wanted to pivot just kind of back now to the journey of a trader or a journey of somebody in, in a, a customer within the fintech space or financial services space. And it goes back to kind of marketing, the acquisition space. So Alex, uh, I wanted to ask you kind of, can you articulate what does data-driven marketing mean? And what does it mean within the 4X industry specifically, please? Yeah, uh, thanks very much, Michael. So when we're talking about data-driven marketing, what I'm saying, what we're talking about is actually the, the sort of like the new realm, because as everybody's seeing, one of the best assets that we have right now is being able to collect data about the traders, about the people that are coming onto our platform and basically be able to get those insights to provide them back with like a personalized experience. So when we're talking about data-driven marketing is about making sure that we are collecting all the information that is coming from, let's say, uh, their online behavior that can come from social media channels, that can come from like the trading platforms, and then be able to use this to basically provide back an experience that is personalized to the things that they are manifesting interest in, to the moment that they are at when it comes to the life cycle itself, and specifically to the, let's say, channel of engagement that they wish to do. So that's what we're talking about, data-driven marketing. It's actually taking all the information that we're talking about, coming back to what, you know, even Alan was mentioning with the Industrial Revolution, and then using this to provide this effortless and personalized experience to traders back. And then how do we innovate based on that experience, Alex? How, what's the innovation behind this uh, data that, that intelligent marketing can drive? Well, what I would say right now is like the ethos when we're talking about, let's say, marketers and the trading world is this type of a contextual journey that we have. Because typically we went from mass marketing like 20, 30 years ago to this type of, let's say, level of personalization that is I would say sort of like the present or maybe like three, four years ago when we had this personalized images, personalized name in the email and so on. But now we're going into the contextual journey, which means, for example, if I am on the website trading for a specific, uh, let's say, uh, currency or I'm trading for a specific company, the question is, how do you provide to me the right? message and the right context at the right time. And that's where we're talking about this contextual journey, coming back to what Pierre-Yves was mentioning just before, with the next best action, next best offer that is delivered digitally. So we're going beyond the classical, just send an email based off something. We're actually saying, look, if you're on the websites right now, you're looking at this and we know you came three times before, then that means we can actually send you something which is contextual for you. So this is when we're talking about the, the ethos right now, we're taking this and using the data to be able to pinpoint where the customer is, what type of channel is uh, they're, they're actually using and deliver this experience on their own terms in their own context. And a fun question for you, Alex, is, is if I'm a, a Forex company um, and I'm looking at uh, driving proactive and reactive uh, content, to my traders or, or to my customers, um, what's the value in, in the Salesforce architecture uh, that drives uh, um, that, that correct use of data? What are the values you're bringing to, to a business um, in, this, in this space? 
Well, I think here, you know, like the, the point is like this, we, there are multiple tools in the market that can do all these things where Salesforce comes in and sort of like shifts this game. And I think it's, it's something that has been covered in the session also a couple of times before is we're talking about the platform approach. So what we're talking about is actually, you can do email on a tool, you can do SMS on another tool, you can do social media on another tool. What Salesforce kind of changes here is saying, we're actually bringing a platform where you can connect your data points, make sense of that data, use it for segmentation and personalization purposes, and then execute into a single platform on all those channels. So our approach from this standpoint is to come back and say, we have a platform that can cover all these topics and we're no longer discussing about endless, let's say a separate integration and, and bits and pieces, but rather thinking about creating a unified data model and then execute this across multiple platforms, uh, multiple channels, I'm sorry, on the same platform. Michael seems to have uh, frozen there a little bit. So uh, while he while he um, while he reconnects, uh, one point I thought would be really great to make. Um, just thinking about what you said, Pierre, and what you've said, Alex, um, and a conversation I'm having a lot with forex companies is around. Look, we want to do all these things very quickly. Um, we want to innovate fast. We want to develop these new channels. But how can we ensure security and compliance during this process. And I loved what you were saying, Alex, about the whole notion of um, one platform and a unified data model. So that makes it exceptionally easy for Salesforce um, because we're a platform and because we're a very mature product, we have pre-made capabilities to deliver GDPR compliance FedRAMP, SOC1, all the financial services compliance capabilities, but we allow you to go a step further than that as well. So in terms of establishing trust with your customers, we have capabilities to deliver privacy policies and guarantee digital chain of custody. And again, you know, I think Pierre, you were talking about integration. So Salesforce is a very open platform and we actually own a very large integration company called MuleSoft. And we're pouring MuleSoft technology into the core of the platform so we can seamlessly integrate with transactional platforms like MT4, MT5 and everything really. Um, and what that gives you is that single source of truth. It comes back to that single source of truth. When we've got that, we can defend it, we can secure it and we can innovate on it. Um, yeah. And it's, it's done with low code and no code. So you don't need a, 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 a brain surgeon and a rocket scientist and a data scientist to come together and figure out how do we protect and innovate our customer data. Absolutely. It's provided on Salesforce platform. I lost you for a second, Michael, so I just jumped in. It's the new world. It's the new world, yeah. team. I was cut off there, so sorry about that. But it is a good segue. I'm conscious of the time we have here. Um, it's a good segue uh, to, okay, the differential between Salesforce is the platform. It's crystal clear. We'll help with the, the effort levels and we'll drive innovation. Um, so, so rounding it back to yourself, Christos. So you've, you've sourced kind of, you've been into a, a Forex company, you've sourced, there's opportunity for, for us to drive value within that business. They've now selected Salesforce as the vendor of choice to drive that innovation. How do you uh, and NetGU mitigate risk then by implementation of Salesforce and building that success? Can you talk through that please a little bit for us? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Michael. Well, the, the approach is, is usually depending on the customer. Uh, we, we provide, you know, the resources, the methods, and the customer usually decides the speed and the scope. So there, there you know, there are so many ways that Salesforce uh, can help, uh, as, as my colleagues uh, mentioned before, uh, but, but we need to build with the customer, we sit together with the customer and actually build a successful, a successful implementation path. Um, we, we discuss, we select priorities, we select the timeframes and the scope for the project. So, you know, the, the journey can go on very long, but we usually suggest to break up the scope of, uh, into smaller projects, quick wins, let's say. Um, every, every small piece, it's a project by itself. So we tackle it with a specific methodology. Uh, there is a start, there is an end, there we deliver specific things in each project. And of course, all these projects are managed by professionals. 
Now, regarding project risks, uh, you, you asked, um, the first and very important element I would like to, to mention is NetView's experience. So NetView, as you mentioned before, uh, is the leading systems integrator in Cyprus and one of the largest uh, uh, SI in the region for the last 30 years. So we have been a Salesforce partner since 2014. Now we're going into the seventh year um, uh, with more than 60 live projects currently. So it's, it's, a, it's an important uh, milestone for us. It's an important uh, 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 you know, uh, area of expertise for us. So NetView is um, one of, of the elements, the experience of NetView is one of the elements that we have to put down. Now, we have a team of professionals. Most of them are certified in their area of expertise. All our projects are managed by a dedicated project manager who is constantly you know, monitoring the scope, the budget, the timeframes in, in the interest of the project itself. And, and you know, applying all this type of agility with uh, you know, the smaller projects, smaller deliverable, let's say uh, one every month, every two months, um, can really turn out to be very beneficial in avoiding this, uh, this risk that usually arise in, in projects like this. The customer, it, it, it is in a, he is in a way uh, really on, on top of the of things uh, on a continuous, ba on continuous basis uh, in full transparency of the deliverables and the work that is being done. Now, I, I would also like to say here that NetU not only implements, you know, uh, sales for you know projects. Uh, of uh, NetU is offering also support. Okay, so Absolutely. we have. Uh, a dedicated, uh, so we are there after the go live of the project. So we are there um, with a dedicated support center, dedicated support consultants uh, that they can solve any issues that are reported, you know, from the daily use of the system uh, of, of, uh, from the customer. And, and in general, I have to say that having, you know, an SLA uh, with a partner like a local partner like uh, NetU gives you the peace of mind. To, to, to concentrate on your business and not on, on other things. We, we take care of this. Um, bottom line, bottom line uh, what I want to say is that really in the center of a project like this is, is the customer expectation. We really strive to meet the customer expectation. It, it's ha it has to be in our center, in, in a target for us and a priority for us. So, Meeting the customer expectation is all we have to do in order for the project to be successful. Absolutely, and I, I love, my first trip into the region was myself and Modesta, and and I think yourself. We we had held our first event um, in Nicosia. It was one of my first trips when I joined Salesforce initially. So thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, from from the entire team, I want to thank whoever is listening. Um, we really appreciate you. Uh, if there was any further questions you had for uh, from the Salesforce or, or NetU side, please reach out to any of us directly. Uh, we're big advocates for LinkedIn. And um, Faristo, thank you for your time and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.